Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of Enphoto Live. It's going to be a wonderful broadcast for you. We have a tremendous guest for you waiting in the wings. But before we get to that, I have to remind our audience about our wonderful promotion that we have going on right now, all about mini sessions. Here we are in the middle of September, just about to get to the fall season officially, though we all feel it with school getting back up and going. And this is the time of year when we are all thinking about mini sessions. There are so many wonderful ideas that you can do around this time of year to help your photography studio and your photography business as it relates to mini sessions. So to help you with that, I have just added in our discussion board a link to a landing page for our promotion where you can get 45% off a whole litany of products that we have specifically uh, collected for you that will be the best for you to offer uh, your clients for mini sessions. Now, this is including fine art prints, which is our new product, which are yet to come, but you're going to love them so much. Our triplex photo albums are raved about photo albums in two of our collections in smaller sizes, six by six and six by eight or eight by six as well. Our folio box, a box for prints and our framed print in our wall decor lineup. These products are coming to you 45% off now through December 15th. And these are for client orders too. So you can use this promotion as many times as you want from now through December 15th to help you generate some extra cash and really get those mini sessions going for your studio to read more about this promo simply click on the link that i provided in the uh chat and also be sure to visit our website mphoto.com slash en to read more about mini sessions as well as our blog space blog.mphoto.com to learn how mini sessions can help you make the big money as a professional photographer all right so that's it for my plug for today thank you so much nikki for sitting there so patiently for me <laughs> as i went through Hi. Uh, but now to get to the meat of it, here we have uh, award-winning senior photographer Nikki Hufford joining us all the way from Ohio. Hello, Nikki. How are you today? Hi, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, and I'm really excited to get going with this interview. So those of you listening in, tuning in, please let us know in the comments where you're coming from. Say a nice hello. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop them off in the little chat box, and we will be sure to address them as we go through this wonderful live chat today all right nikki what do you say we just go ahead and jump right into it sounds great okay you know what? actually i wanted to kind of just start by asking you what you've been up to lately oh yeah well we are knee deep in senior season here so um midwest i'm in ohio so that means our season runs typically about june through maybe mid-november right around thanksgiving it tends to end um for the for the majority of our outside senior work. So um, yeah, we're kind of really hitting that uh, peak fall time here in the next couple of weeks. So uh, it's about the only time of the year that I just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. So there's no limit on how many sessions we'll book. We it's, it's and anybody in Ohio knows fall color rules. So, you know, getting, getting into that time of the year. So preparing okay. for it too. Sure. Now, have you experienced any, uh, you know, change in your business, any slowdown from everything? Yeah. So day? it's not at all. And and we kind of chatted earlier this year during the, like when everything was locked down and stuff. And I, we talked about how I was a little worried and maybe making some changes. Um, and honestly, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, I think maybe seniors are missing a lot of things that they're, they used to just think was a given. So senior pictures have kind of almost become, a big deal again. So it's really, it's really cool to see them excited about pictures again and excited about their session. And, you know, they're coming to me with these crazy ideas and bringing grandpa's trucks and, and, uh, you know, they're really going all out. And so it's a lot of fun this year. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, for those of you who might not be so familiar with you, Nikki, uh, how about you describe your brand for us, Nikki Hufford Photography. Like, how would you describe uh, your yeah, brand? Yeah. So my, my brand is definitely, um, I cater towards that high-end high school senior um, I am definitely athletes. So I, I go after the athletes, the athletes come to me. They love, they love my work. Um, you know, I'm definitely a little edgier, a little bit more fashion inspired. Um, so I get a lot of that type of senior as well. 
but we mix it up. So I can do a little bit of the normal senior portrait for grandma, and then we can go really crazy and trendy for the senior. So uh, really versatile and just really mixing it up and um, known really for that lighting and that experience that nobody else around me has. So. Okay. Now, I just want to say, because we do have quite an international audience uh, mm -hmm. that tunes in, our, our American photographers, of course, will know what's up. But for those of you who are tuning in from overseas, I know senior photography can kind of be a very yeah. uh, national American kind of thing. Yes. But as uh, Nikki has said, it's for, you know, high school seniors, which usually are 16, yeah. 17, 18 year old kids. Mm -hmm. This is a big thing in America. You know, I grew up in America, though. That time of year, uh, that time in their life, they get these special portraits done. When I was when I was that age, it wasn't so special. <laughs> but yeah. Now it's really blown yeah. up. But if you're listening to us abroad and you're not really so sure what seniors are, just think of them like portraits. I mean, you could use yeah. anything that uh, Nikki is going to tell us today. Well, my tongue is yep. Tired. I have a lot I of good friends in like in Australia, and they have just made it essentially. Mm -hmm. um, like they call them like milestone sessions and I've branded them instead of saying senior portraits and it works really well for them too. So it, I, honestly, I think especially overseas, it's an untapped market because I feel like these kids want to look like the magazine, but they don't realize that people offer it. So it, it's obviously, it would be a lot more work than it is to establish a brand here doing it, but it's possible. So. Absolutely. But like you said, I mean, uh, people all over the world, this age range, they just yeah. love getting the pictures and the more, oh, yeah. you know, decked out it can be, as yeah. they like to say, the better. And, you know, you do a lot of sports work. I've seen sports yeah. photography done all over the world as well. So uh, excellent. Now, but if we stick kind of with seniors, because, again, we do yeah. have a large American audience yeah. as well. You do have a very distinctive style and you're known very much for your brand and, and the style mm -hmm. that you have as, and Nikki Hub for photography. But what can some other senior photographers do to help establish their own style? Um, I, I think if you try to be somebody you're not, it shows through. These kids okay. nowadays, this generation, they're really looking for somebody that's authentic to themselves. So if I was, if I came to the session and I'm wearing like these boho clothes and stuff like that, and that's what I'm portraying, that's the seniors I'm going to book. So oh. <clears throat> for me, I played sports all the way through college. Um, I had a full ride scholarship for softball. So for me, it was just natural to fall into that hard, edgy lighting and, and go after those seniors that, that I relate to. Because now I can sit there and I can have a conversation with them and I can talk about the college recruiting process and I can give them advice there. And so we relate, we relate very, very well. So of course these kids are gonna come to me and then they're gonna tell their friends that are probably very much like themselves too. I, I had Nikki who like took care of me, man. And they're gonna come to me as well. So um, go after the, go after the person that you relate to the most. So um, that's the biggest thing I think. Um, and then your style follows, so. Okay, so just mm -hmm. being you. But how yeah, important, definitely. especially in the genre of senior photography, like how mm -hmm. important is having a strong brand and a strong style? Oh, it's it's super huge. Yeah. Um, people come to me because they want pictures that look like what I'm producing and putting out there every day. So um, if you if you are not really targeting that person, that senior that wants that look, then they're going to come to you and just be disappointed. Um, there, I, I actually just talked to a friend of mine and she, we're local competitors the other day. And we, we were talking about sometimes we can tell that um, my, the senior that booked me should have went to her or vice versa, you know, cause I can tell they're like looking, I'm like, why they even come to me, you know? And, and it, it goes both ways. So um, you, you really have to have that brand. So that way you, you can pick out that kid that is going to enjoy the experience that you're offering. So um, it goes down to fonts. It goes down to logo design, everything. So every single piece of my website, every copy on my website, every, my logo design, I just actually did a, huge rebranding with that. Um, it was all picked out to look like, you know, mimic that Nike ad and mimic that Reebok ad and, you know, those big name sports athletic um, brands because that's what the kid I want. So font choices matter, colors matter. All of that is really, really important. So. Okay. Now, are these things that you're just, uh, just when you're making decisions about like a yeah. font and all this kind of stuff, are oh, those things see, you're doing? you hire somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, um, I could link it later on. I'd have to get her all of her information, but you know, I, I searched out and I found somebody and I found somebody with a really bold portfolio and design work. Cause I knew that's what I wanted. So, and, and she ran with my ideas and, you know, and 
um, we, we hire professional photographer, you know, we're, we're professional photographers, we're hired for our work. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a marketer. So I, I'm not okay. somebody that's going to go out and brand a business. So I hired somebody to do that all for me. So the best money okay. I ever spent. So okay, and yeah, so and yeah. not be afraid uh, to do no. something like that for for no. other photographers listening into mm -hmm. this. Uh, now, a very similar line of thought, Nikki, I want to say this, and I you know, I want to uh let people know again that you have over 10 years experience in this industry mm -hmm. and you've been named top 100 senior photographer in the world five times and you are all over every senior photography <laughs> watch list Thank uh, you. so you are kind of a big deal nikki <laughs> Thanks. and i want to then ask you uh you know for the benefit of our audience is what can aspiring senior photographers do to help kind of achieve a similar success as you have um, you just can't be afraid. You got to go out there and try new things. And, um, and sometimes that means spending money on things, um, not necessarily gear or equipment, but, um, renting out a location, you know what I mean? Something maybe that nobody else has ever done before, like rent out something. And there's, there's always theaters that you could rent out. There's always cool restaurants you could rent out for an hour to shoot in maybe in the morning hours when they're not busy or, you know, so go out there and take it, take a risk and try something new. Um, every single year I challenge myself with at least three or four different shoots that I know that I want to try to accomplish. And I go all out. I'll spend all year long designing them, um, you know, or I'll rent this location and we'll drive four hours to go shoot there. So, I mean, even with all these like quarantines and lockdowns with COVID, mm -hmm. um, I had to pivot some things this year, but we made it work. And, you know, we gave the kids still something that like nobody else was getting. And I think that's really, really important. But that also goes back towards when I'm getting judged for these competitions and things like that, when I'm shooting in these rooms and or these buildings and, and things that aren't that typical down the street senior picture, they're gonna get noticed more. So you're going mm -hmm. to get more notice in the industry from your peers, you're gonna get more notice um, from your seniors as well. Okay. Now from a client perspective, like if I'm a senior mm -hmm. and I'm interested in a photographer and I, I come across you, Mm -hmm. uh, are you pitching to me your idea for a shoot or are you allowing me to give you my idea or are you making yeah i always marriage? i so yeah it, it's a little bit sometimes both but um for my seniors um i let them run with it so mm -hmm. because it's um senior pictures you know what i mean mm -hmm. and senior pictures should be about them not about me so um, I let them come to me with ideas. If they don't have any ideas at all and they want something a little bit more traditional, we keep it a little bit more traditional. Everybody's needs are different. Um, I have some okay. seniors, I just had a senior come to me. Um, she brought three, I haven't even posted them yet. I, we still have to do the ordering, but it gives you a good example of how she ran with it this time. She saw a picture on Instagram and she sent it to me and she goes, I really wanna do this. I said, girl, get me those mirrors and we're all in. So her parents found these, huge mirrors and and I had to make like a room out of salvage paper in my studio basically to make it work and it, it was like three hours to set it up but like it they turned out so cool like I cannot wait to post them um but you know that was all her so and I'm mm -hmm. like looking at it now and she gave me the mirrors so I'm like um I think I'm gonna like do a whole creative shoot with my model team next year with these mirrors too because it turned out so cool so sometimes if you let them lead the way a little bit and don't be afraid like you don't always have to be the person going out and getting the stuff like this was the seniors thing you know like and so it was really easy for me to say hey mom like i'm all for this but you got to grab the mirrors you got to find this stuff like i'm not doing it for you so she was really cool with it i mean the mom was like on it and she had them at my studio like three days later she found them somewhere used but um so yeah, like t let them take the lead a little bit and run with it, but you can still make it your own. So I, I shot it completely different than the picture she originally showed me. So it's still my style. It was still my look, but it incorporated some of her idea too. So. Okay. And it's a great idea to get them involved too. Mm -hmm. uh, really make them feel ownership to it and give them yeah. a sense of, of input. And yeah, and, and it's going to be stuff. them then. So it's exactly. going to be exactly what they want versus um you know i could come at them with 17 different ideas and none of them would be them so right it, it's such a great idea mm -hmm. having said that though do you see that there's kind of a common motif or a common kind of uh thing that your clientele are asking for like do you often do kind of more cityscapes is it yeah more the so nature? Is it more like the thing i love to do is mix it up so i go by i all my senior packages are done by outfits 
So like mm-hmm. I have a three outfit, a five outfit, and then an unlimited outfit um, collection that they could purchase for their sessions. So um, I, you know, if it's five outfits, maybe I'll do, if they're more country, you know, I'll do three in the mm-hmm. like long grass and parks and pretty flowers, but then I'm always gonna push them for one or two and say, listen, you don't need five outfits all in green grass you know like Mm -hmm. let's go and do a couple urban ones too and it's Mm -hmm. vice versa as well so if they're definitely more urban i'm still going to try to push them into that one outfit like maybe a little bit more flowers or green grass or you know something a little bit more naturey because honestly it just gives you more variety um i also change up the lighting i have a lot of people that are always like oh my gosh you use these lights every single shoot every single outfit da, da, da. and i'm like no i shoot natural light a lot too so mm-hmm. because i can do it so why not give mm-hmm. them multiple different looks so it doesn't mm-hmm. just have to be about the location changing you could also totally change the mood by just changing their clothes changing your lighting up changing your lens up i'll shoot most senior sessions with four or five lenses so because each lens is going to give them a totally different look too so mm-hmm. that's how you sell more pictures so the more variety you can create in your images, the more you are going to sell. So, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> and do you do you have different um, like packages that you offer, or is it kind of a one? Yeah, one so option for everybody, so, how do you? Yeah, that? so no, I I keep it really really simple. Um, and I we kind of talked earlier this year about this a little bit, but um, mm-hmm. when everything with COVID happened and everything, um. I knew I needed to make my product line really, really, really simple because Mm -hmm. I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna be able to offer this year. Um, I wasn't sure if there was gonna be delays on products. And I talked to you guys and you were like, no, we're in, we're we're still producing. So um, I switched all my packages to digital files in one of your albums. So Mm -hmm. um, that's what they get. So um, so I made it really simple. Now they can add on and a lot do, a lot of my canvases and wall art and things like that. But my base collections are all just either an album or in digital in a certain amount of digital files so it's worked really 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 well this year um the parents are totally digging the albums they love the presentation of them um when you guys started doing the folio boxes i let them choose between an album or a folio box so no Mm -hmm. price difference i just said either a five by seven album box or an eight by eight album or a eight by ten folio box or a ten by ten album they could pick between Mm -hmm. the two and um it's 50 50 they go back and forth but they feel like they still have a little bit of a choice i feel like and Mm -hmm. um it's it's really really working well so okay we'll get into some more discussion about print products a little bit later yeah uh before that we're going to get into some kind of marketing questions but before even that still i remember (laughs) uh, i read something or, or like you said we were talking earlier yeah uh, in the year, and you had told me that you, you used to be a wedding photographer, like you started yeah. photography as a wedding photographer. Yep. And so I wanted to ask you, like, how how does that market, the wedding photography market, kind of compare or contrast to the senior photography market? Yeah, you know, and it's so funny because um, my, I didn't notice it. My husband does, and my husband runs a business with me. But I kind of this year went with my print collections with my seniors. It's almost kind of like I was doing with my weddings. I simplified it all. Digital files, album, walk out the door, you know? Um, so I kind of went that route almost. So they're almost identical to what I used to be doing with my weddings. Now, weddings was a lot more upfront, whereas my seniors, I have a low booking fee. You come in and you order and it's a lot, you know, that's where I make my money, not so much the shooting fee. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, uh, it's still the same premises kind of. So um, albums are big in both worlds. Um, obviously, I don't, there's a debate about the digital files. I feel like in this generation, most of the kids that are getting married are my seniors from a few years ago and, and digital files were really important then. And they're only mm-hmm. triple as important now. So I yeah. feel like I get a lot of people that book me just because I'm offering them. So, um, you know, I think you gotta, as long as you're educating your client on how to, to where to print, what to order from you, what the digital files are great for and things like that. I think it's almost like a given. You got to be offering those to your clients at the right pricing. Mm-hmm. You got to make money off of them, obviously. Right. But yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's go there since we're kind of there, and yeah. I'll, I'll probably forget to be honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, this marrying or kind of working with digital and print products as well, mm-hmm. because uh, you do offer a lot of print products. Yeah. And uh, that's what that's one thing you like to sell a lot, but you also do offer digital. So how do you yeah. do that? How do you properly? I guess is the word I want to use. How do you properly offer digital products to your clientele yeah so i 
I just include the USB with the end photo folios or the albums and they just get them right on there. So I also give them an online gallery where they can download them as well. But um, that, so they only can get digitals if they order one of those albums from me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So number one, they know what it's supposed to look like now. So mm -hmm. they have a correct color image in their album or their folio box of what that, that digital file is supposed to be. Plus they're never going to put their USB stick into their computer and show their pictures that way. They're going to open up their right. folio box and they're going to go, Oh my gosh, look at these amazing pictures. So I'm still controlling my quality. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they're also still getting that item that they think they need. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is the digital files. So really digital files are for sharing more than anything. They really want to share those. Um, some of them print some four by sixes out, but I never have clients going in and printing 30 by 40 wall portraits from them. They're ordering them from me because I'm educating them from the very beginning saying, if it's going to be on your wall forever, order it through me. You mm -hmm. know, it's just plain and simple. So, um, and they do. So, because I'm honest with them and, you know, and, and they see the difference. So, you know, they always, if they didn't order it in their ordering meeting, they always come back and order a canvas later. So. Okay. Okay. And on the USB, are you giving them like the full mm -hmm. files for the photos? Yeah, they... I just give them the full. Yeah, I don't mess mm -hmm. around with it. It's just easier for me to keep track of. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I've, I've really experimented with this over the years. Um, I, I used to do a social media file and then they would just print it anyways. I used mm -hmm. to do an eight by 10 or under file and they would just print those big anyways. So why fight it? Charge accordingly. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, these are not cheap. They're, they're paying... Mm -hmm big money for them, you know? And um, it's because I, I'm making the same, if not more by doing it this way than I was doing all these products before. And they're happier, they're getting what they want, you know? So that's what these kids want nowadays. They want those files. And like I said, they're really not printing them that much. Um, they're, it's more for sharing, so. Right, and you're, yep. like you say, you're only offering it with a print product. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like you, you can just buy only the digital files. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah, then they get and like yeah, like you said, I can't think of you know a group of people who would more want digitals and yeah. seniors <laughs> and your yeah. teenage. Oh yeah. Well, and so. honestly, nowadays they kind of need them. I mean, right. it's honestly they need them. Like every single scholarship requires a headshot. Okay, they have to Absolutely. include a headshot. Every mm -hmm. like all of that stuff, all the ads through the year, all the you know, so they're using them like crazy. So. Mm -hmm. by let, allowing them just to buy them and they don't have to come to me and say, Hey, can you send this picture to the scholarship committee for me? Do you know how much less work it is? Like I used to get those emails trip, like probably 15 of them a day during the busy season. And now I have to go find the file, email it to this place or email to this. So now I'm charging for the digital accordingly and I don't get any of that extra work either. So. Right. And you, you mentioned how, people will get the digitals and the print products mm -hmm. or you look at one of your packages and you said that even if they want something else, they'll still come back to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or they just do it right during their ordering meeting. So I offer, yeah. I always offer little incentives in order to, to like, so if they purchase a collection, they're going to get a little bit off wall art and things like that, but only during the ordering meeting. So if they okay. know they want wall, wall art, they're always going to buy it during that because it's kind of like mm -hmm. almost like a build your own collection. So sure. I have the really basic stuff, but then, it, you know, if I have somebody to add four pieces of wall art, I'm going to give them a discount on those pieces of wall art. Okay. Yeah. You know, a lot of photographers, though, they fear that if they get, especially like four as images, mm -hmm. if they give them that on a digital, then the clients will never see them again. Do you think that, you know, I, uh, I've been paid enough, but I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the key. That's I think, key. I think people are so, leery of charging what digital files are worth mm -hmm. you know um so i would rather charge accordingly to the product they want the most mm -hmm. and then discount on wall art that they purchase and yeah. i'm still making more than you know so yeah mm -hmm. it just you have to charge what the digital files are worth if you want to make two three thousand dollars a senior and you're pushing digital files that product should be that high you know mm -hmm. so yeah. And, you know, everybody has their own style of how they want to run mm -hmm. their business. I'm not trying to tell anybody to do no, that. No, yeah. I think marrying, like you said, putting mm -hmm. the two together, like you can't yep. just get digital on its yeah. own. If you're somebody who wants to be selling print, you know, that's another way. Mm -hmm. That's another way to go about it. Uh, okay. I want to jump back it, to your. It, yeah, oh, it's ahead. worked to me. This is my first year. 
I mean, I've always done digital files, okay? And it's always been mm -hmm. a big portion of my collections. This is mm -hmm. the first year where I have added the end photo full collection boxes. So it has the USB and everything yeah, with the digitals and said, mm -hmm. this is what you get. And it has, I mean, my cost of goods are down. I'm making more per session. Um, it's simplified. I just go in, I order the box, I'm done, you know, most of the time. Or, Absolutely. you know, add a couple of pieces yeah. of canvases. Um, I, mm -hmm. There's not, I, I, if you look at my gross and my net this year, I'm way higher than I ever have been before. So good move. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. And this product uh, that Nikki keeps referring to, to all those in the audience is known as our complete album set. She's using the album variation where again, you can get a USB included with the print product and an all packaged nicely in a nice box. We mm -hmm. also offer products like these that feature a uh, Dreambook 4K, our uh, state of the art photo book that uses 4K printing and also a uh, photo album, or sorry, photo book pro. Mm -hmm. So you can get all those bundled together. And we have many other options. Even the folio box can be ordered with the USB as well. So we yeah. have many options of products that can offer you both digital and print all in one. And I put a link to our website in the chat. So feel free to visit that and check out our other options that can give you the best of both worlds here. Because it also then, when you do it this way, like you've done it, Nikki, like you said, you're not putting your head in the sand, but instead you're nope. taking ownership of the digital because that's not going anywhere. That's the, nope. You know, we can't sit here and pretend like digital is going to Why disappear. fight it? Yeah, why yeah, fight exactly. it? So everybody exactly. keeps talking about those shoot and burn photographers. Well, people are going to them because that's what they want. They want that product. So if I can give them my quality, but that product that they want, it's a no brainer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I want to go back to your time as a wedding photographer yeah. and now again you're a senior photographer yeah. was, was there anything uh i mean i'm sure there are some things that you've taken from your experience as a wedding photographer and mm -hmm. use as a senior photographer what what are some of those uh mostly mostly it's in the lighting um for me okay. um being a wedding photographer starting out um you're if, if the bride wants pictures at noon you you, you got to do pictures at noon um so um you really learn how to light scenario like like different rooms and light scenarios really well um so um i actually have because that's the world i grew up in essentially as a photographer um i shoot all my sessions like midday so i like mm -hmm. that light um mm -hmm. so i'm done by two or three most days you know, I can come home and finish out the day editing or, you know, doing, catching up on client emails or something. Uh, whereas most photographers are just starting their day. So I like to get in, I get, get in early. We shoot early in the morning. We're done by, you know, it's, it's depending on the session, normally by two at the latest. And we got the rest of our day. Wow. So that's the biggest thing I think is I stop worrying about that golden hour. You can recreate that if you know how to light correctly and things like that. So. Okay. What does, what caused you to change from shooting weddings to uh, doing senior photography? Um, I just wanted my weekends. So um, I, I saw the senior market starting to get really, really big. Um, mm -hmm. And I started to see that people were making as much for a senior as they were a wedding in my area. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so, oh, yeah. So if not more, honestly. So um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I was like, wait, I could work a couple of days a week and edit a quarter of the pictures and produce work that I really like love versus crazy hectic wedding days. And then, and then trying to catch up on all that editing. And, and mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, for me, it just worked out better. It gave me a little bit more freedom with my family on the weekends and um, allowed me to kind of create that schedule that I really wanted that almost nine to five schedule. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, it, yeah, for me, it was just more just being there with my family more and, and not traveling as crazy for these weddings. So. Absolutely. Do you think, or do you see that the uh, senior market is just growing and continuing to evolve or is it something like, like, do you see it continuing to grow? Cause everybody knows about the yeah. wedding industry generally, you know, this year is. Yeah. Weddings are always going to be there. Um, and there's a lot of talk back and forth about oh, the senior industry is dying and these kids just go to their friends for pictures. And I'm like, and I say that's because you, they can recreate what you're giving them mm -hmm. from their phone. So if you're just a natural light yeah. photographer, you're not doing studio work and you're not doing this kind of work, then it's going to be a lot easier for them to recreate it. So, but mm -hmm. the, the lighting that I'm doing, the editing that I'm doing, the, um, 
studio work and things like that are things that are setting me apart and they, they can't do that themselves. So you just have to make sure that you are doing something that they can't go with their best friend and shoot. So. Okay. I see a question uh, in the, uh, from mm -hmm. the audience from Amanda. Hello, Amanda. She wants to know uh, what your pricing packages include. Is it just hair and makeup with this uh, sitting fee or yeah. anything else? So my base, my my three sessions that you find on my website and stuff, um, it, it has three outfits, five outfits are unlimited. Um, and they range from 250 to 450 for those. And that is just hair and makeup in the session fee. So I call it a booking fee. It, it seems to work really well by calling it a booking fee. More people understand that then they, they understand that's the fee to book me and nothing comes with it. So, um, so yeah, but I do do hair and makeup. I've been working with a salon bang hair um uh we've been working together since we started our business we actually went to high school together so we kind of both opened up around the same time and we've we i mean she, we've grown together she's her team's now huge and i've got people under me now too and and we've kind of done it together and and uh my seniors love her she's her her brand matches mine we've actually used the same branding um person to do both of our branding so hers definitely fits her but mine fits me but you can see similarities and um it, it works out really really well um yeah we could yeah so um, amanda i just saw yeah i saw it um yeah i give them my full price list i i'm very transparent so they they know every price up front they would never be allowed to book me without seeing all my pricing in fact when they book they actually have to click i i agree that they have seen my whole entire pricing menu so if they come ever come back to me and say, oh, um, I've never seen this pricing before, I'll be like, but you clicked, you did. So um, it really helps. So yeah, I'd, I'd be transparent. I, I I don't like the fact that some people say I the average senior spends this to this. Um, I just give it to them. Because if, if I'm too much for them, I want them to know ahead of time versus you know when we're sitting down at that ordering meeting and they're sticker shocked, so. Okay, yeah, great questions, Amanda. Mm -hmm to you in the audience keep them coming if you ever have a question don't hesitate to drop them in here uh yeah okay yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah and it's happened so it's this is life lessons of how i've learned how to deal with it but yeah for me just being super honest and transparent with them tends to work the best but also having them sign off that they have read it so mm -hmm. um I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. If if the audience is thinking of other questions, and again, you've been at this for now for ten years mm -hmm. with senior photography, and how have you seen the market kind of evolve and change over the those past ten years? Yeah, it's really changed. Um, it started off um, when I started off. It was much more um, very traditional. Um, so people were starting to go outside more. They were starting to experiment a little bit more, um, but. Um, all my sports were still shot outside. All of my, you know, most of my seniors were just natural light, soft and pretty poses. Um, in the last 10 years, it's really evolved into, I think Instagram has changed a lot um, because they're seeing these celebrities post pictures and that's what they want. So they want to look like these celebrities. They want to look like the magazine. You know, they, that's really what they're looking for. If, if they're, if, if it's just a pretty headshot, they could probably almost do that on their own nowadays um, mm -hmm. with the technology out there. So you have to give them, like we were kind of talking before, you have to give them something that they can't do. So lots of really cool lighting, really cool venues to shoot at, um, you know, destination trips. Obviously this year's destination trips have been a little uh, harder to do, but you know, we'll be starting that hopefully up again next year. So destinations, um, we've been Puerto Rico, we've been Iceland, we, you know, so we take these seniors at crazy places. So, uh, we're offering them something that they never could get otherwise. So. Okay. Uh, now you mentioned Instagram and this is going to lead us into our mm -hmm. talk of social media, but first I yeah. want to get to Amanda Holt's question. She wants to know if you do yeah. model calls. No, I never do a model call. Um, so I do have a model team currently. Um, I'm looking to change that up a little bit. Um, but I, I feel like, um, it, I think there's a point in time for model calls, especially when you're starting off. And if you do them right, you can not only build your portfolio, but make a little bit of money too. Um, but, um, you know, I've always found that, um, if I'm doing model calls, I'm getting people that are just looking for freebies and that's, and then 
their friends are going to see them and their, those friends are going to be really similar to them. So I'm basically building a clientele that I really don't want. So I would much rather hold out. And if I, if I wanted to do a project, I would go get somebody who spent a lot of money with me already. And I'd say, Hey, I really need to go shoot for this project. Would you come and model for me? So I'd rather give a paying client that freebie experience because they're going to go and tell their friends that, and most likely their friends are, would also be willing to spend money with me as well. So, so, you know, you want that, you want to build that, that model that of that client target versus just somebody online. So, um, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what do you think the best advertising resources? Um, I'm a huge believer and we're, we're going to get into this a little bit, but, um, I do a lot of Facebook marketing. Um, I do some Google ads, face, Facebook ads. Um, so that obviously ties into Instagram and all that as well. Um, I, my seniors are all online. So if I sent them something in the mail, um, they would look at me and probably just throw it away. You know, they, the parents would, you know, I don't think mail marketing, it works for some. But in my market, it doesn't work at all. So mine's all just strategic Instagram ads, Facebook ads, social media ads, that kind of thing. So, yeah, and I totally agree with her. Next mm -hmm. comment, Amanda Iceland. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back in time and book you as my senior. Photographer. Yeah, it was a blast. It was so cold. I don't. I mean, oh, I I don't know if I'd ever go back. It was fun. It was pretty. I liked it. But uh, yeah. I'm much more, we went Puerto Rico last year. And that was much more my style. So yeah, I was like, okay, blue skies, lots of sun, beach. I'm like, all right, I'm there. So, <laughs> Hey, Poland's always open too. There well, you go. Yeah. yeah. Not quite as warm as Puerto Rico. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good in between. between us and, yep. uh, I just want to Puerto Rico. Once again, thank you for the comments, everybody. Keep them coming. If you think of something, uh, so to get to social media, I'm sure this is something that everybody has been anticipating. Uh, obviously, it, it will. I mean, probably obviously, but I'm going to ask you anyway. How how important is social media uh, to being successful as a senior? Yeah, player? it's it's huge. Um, I you know I it's something I struggle with. I'm not going to lie because I'm I'm not very like my personality is not like out there in your face. Like, so I would never be like Instagram famous or something like that. So um, for me to do it, it's more just posting my images, consistently posting, um, you know, uh, really using, using that form to show off the best work, show off my clients, allow my clients to be tagged in those images, share those images, um, tag me back in posting and, you know, just building that relationship with them online, I think is really, really big. Um, you know, there's some photographers out there just absolutely killing it with these new Insta reels and things like that. Um, so like the videos, they're kind of like, tick I don't know how much you guys are on Instagram, but uh, they're, they kind of like brought TikToks over to Instagram. So there's some photographers like really like killing it on them. Uh, but for me, that's just not, it would be fake, you know? Um, so that's never been my brand. Um, my brand is more just posting really good quality content and using strategic ads and, um, and it's, it works. So, um, if you're, if your branding is more like you're in front of the camera a lot with your people and stuff like that, go for it, do it. It works really, really well for a lot of people, but I feel like if you're not comfortable doing it, the seniors read right through you. So. Okay. Now you use a lot of, you see, you mentioned uh, you use a lot of strategic advertising. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. What are some things photographers can do to find the right platform or to be able to make sure they're using strategic there is, advertising? Yeah, there's so, so many YouTube and Google articles out there. So I would do exactly what I did was I just went online and I started researching. So I started saying, okay, so how am I going to find my target client through a Facebook ad, you know, what, what filters should I be doing on these ads? What images should I be using? So I did a lot of research and it was a lot of trial and error. I've had some work better than others. Um, so right now, for instance, I'm trying to build my, a, a new associate photographer into the business. So a lot of my ads have been more around her work because I'm trying to build her clientele up and get, you know, cause I, I kind of reached a point that I was booking and, and really, really full. So I felt like it was time to bring somebody new in. So she's doing all the families and the kids and the stuff that I really didn't want to do, but I would take occasionally take. 
So um, I had been shutting it off for the last five to six years because I didn't have a lot of time for it. So now she's, I have to rebuild build that clientele, you know, and she's kind of taking care of it. So we're doing a ton of ads for her. So most of my ads right now aren't even seniors because I'm booking fine on seniors. So most of my ads are going more towards family sessions and newborns and, and building her. So this was her first full month. So we, she's been with me for three year or three months. And within three months, I, ha I booked her completely full. So, so wow. it's just about using them just like really figuring out what person you're marketing to. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding your ideal client and then yeah. targeting them and targeting that. Yep. And their interest and in, yeah. Keywords. And so like, if, for example, if I'm targeting newborn, uh, like somebody about to have a baby, I'm going to put in pregnancy into the ad. I'm going to put, you know, newborns, I'm going to use those keywords. So, and then, you don't need to do national ads. I target maybe 25 square miles, you know? So, um, you know, I keep it more local. That's my client. So I don't need to be advertising three hours away. I'm advertising in my little town. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are all very important things to say too. Uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, be weary of using Facebook or other social media advertising if it's too generic. Yeah, uh, cause absolutely. It, it You're be wasting your money. Or, yeah, or be heard by the wrong people. Yeah. So, yeah, be very careful to be very specific, like mm -hmm. uh, Nikki is saying. Uh, I see another question from Amanda. She wants to know yeah. if you network with other photographers. She says she's in California and the market is saturated and so competitive. Uh, how can people be competitive without ch changing price? Um, so, yeah, um, it's not just all about price, okay? The first thing that a potential client does is look at your work. Um, second, they look at your price. Okay. So that's key to remember. I think a lot of people think it's the opposite, but, um, they had to have seen one of your images in order to, to get interest in you in order enough to look at your pricing page. So, um, if you, if you're in a market that's oversaturated, then your images need to be different than everybody else's. So that's, that's how I've always said. So um, the moment somebody tries to start copying me, I immediately switch and I start doing something different. So in my market, you know what I mean? So um, I'm always want to be the first to do it. And I want to, so when anybody copies me, they're like, oh yeah, they're just trying to be Nikki. You know, that's my goal. So you have to be the first to do it. You have to be different. So um Obviously, California is a lot bigger market than what I'm in. Um, so, and I know it's really, really tough, but I personally know a lot of photographers killing it in California. And their brands are all very unique and very different. And so, if you really, really want to do well in a big market like that, you have to create a brand story that's different from everybody else. Okay. Thank you again for the question, uh, Amanda. We, uh, I'll come back to social media now as the audience is mm -hmm. thinking of more questions. And uh, we established that social media is very important. And you have to mm -hmm. make sure you do it right. Uh, find the ideal client and kind of work yep. backward from them and not just shout on the mountaintops to everybody and anybody. Yeah. Um, do you know there are so many social media platforms out there nowadays? Do you think that any of them are maybe more important than others or should kind of all of them be given equal? Yeah, I think you kind of need to touch them all a little bit. Um, so my big three are Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, Facebook, mm -hmm. I, I target more the moms. Instagram's mm -hmm. more the kids. Twitter just kind of, I'm active on there, but I, I'm all I'm doing is basically throwing whatever I post on Instagram onto Twitter. So it's basically just a carbon copy, but I'm still active. So I'm still, you know, gr getting rank there and everything. Um, mm -hmm. TikTok for me is something I'm slowly trying. Um, still, still, like I said, how the videos are a little harder for me, you know, um, yeah. I'm much better just writing a story down on paper and putting it out there versus actually sitting on video and telling it. So, um, so it's a little harder for me. Um, and it's a little harder for me to be really genuine with the kids. Um, mm -hmm. I think when I'm in front of a camera versus just writing it. So um, TikTok's a challenge, but I'm I'm trying, and it's it's definitely you've got to be there. You at least have to be there. Um, I mean, there my my daughter's thirteen, and and I mean she spends half her I think her and her friends have spend half their day on TikTok. So um, 
but TikTok, you can't just go and say like on TikTok, here's here's a session that I just did. It needs to be something fun and catchy and it needs to be behind the scenes videos and things like that. And um, so, you know, it takes a little bit of planning to really execute that end of it a little bit more so. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to a point where you find yourself needing to do something that, that you're mm -hmm. not so familiar with or so comfortable, that's a good time to reach out to somebody else, isn't it? Like you mentioned yeah. before, uh, yeah. with the market, you have a marketer to help you, you know, with yeah. the brand stuff like that yeah so i actually have a lot of my seniors um and i have some senior clients well not senior clients but like model team members so like um, i take my model team kids from eighth grade through senior year so i have some kids that have been with me for four or five years and i've known their family now for three seniors you know and they're the third kid of the family that's been with me that long so you know um, some of these kids, like, I mean, I'll go have a beer with mom and dad, like after the session, we know each other so well. So I would just give them my TikTok login. So, and I'm like, Hey, I'm like, go ahead and post something if you want. Like, so, because it's not genuine for me, like, and I don't make them very well, but they know exactly how to do it. So, um, so like on shoot days and stuff, I'll like, there's a few of them that I'll just be like, Hey, like you're in charge of TikToks today. Like, you know, and they're like, sweet, they love it. So. Um, it's kind of, you know, the same thing as you, what you were saying, like hiring somebody, let maybe, you know, bring in an intern that's younger and let them, let them do it. Or, um, or have your third, as my 13 year old daughter walks through the room, have your 13 year old daughter do them. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I always approve that stuff through her. So don't be afraid to ask your kids too. Um, they'll be real, real honest with you. Um, I'll get the look and it says, mom, that's so not cool. So, um, and she'll, you know, keep me in line about what I need to be doing as far as social media stuff. So. And I think that's great. I mean, that's the audience that you're trying to yep. target. Who's going to know better than. than Absolutely. Right? Yep. And, so I just you know, ask them. Yeah. The generation gap is a real thing. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, it is. Especially yeah. nowadays. My God. I, I mean, I started this so early. I was in my early twenties. So, um, I always felt like back then I was like, no, it was so easy. And and every year I'm like, it gets harder and harder to keep up with the, what's trending and stuff. So yeah, I just, I just ask them, I let them run it. So works well. I mean, I, I found out way later than I should have what TikTok even was. Like, I was yeah. like somebody showed it to me once and I was like, what is it? Oh, it's been around forever. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I started mine during when, when we were in complete lockdown um, here. That's when I started my TikTok. So I, we were basically like just making funny videos at home a little bit. And um, so that was kind of my like starter, you know, it was a great time to learn it. So, but yeah, ask your, ask your kids, ask your kids, friends, they'll like, they're so into it. They'll, they'll sit you down. They'll give you a crash course. So <laughs> they'll tell you how to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, because senior photography is an interesting dynamic because you're going to be taking the pictures of the senior, the 17-year-old, mm -hmm. 18-year-old. But, of course, their parents are still a very big influence on them. Yeah. At that point. So when you're marketing, are you marketing more to the client as in the senior or to the parent? Or how do you kind of go about that? Dynamic? Yeah, and this is the funny thing. I, I, You know what? I say the exact same thing with weddings, too, and newborns and everything else. Uh, you're always marketing to multiple people when you are um, working with a client. So, mm -hmm. for example, for seniors, um, I'm looking at mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I actually say mom and dad. It's almost like two totally different people there. Okay. Because they have different things that they want too. And then mm -hmm. you also have the senior and then you have the senior's friends. And the senior's friends are just as important. Mm -hmm. So, um, So I start with mom and dad first. So that's my Facebook marketing. So a lot of times on Facebook, I will post pictures that I would never post on Instagram. It's more the cheesy smiling pictures. It's more the traditional senior pictures, you know, and um, they would do horribly on Instagram, but they do great on Facebook. So, and those are the kind of ads that I'm doing. I'm also doing ads on Facebook for my sports images. So if I have a really cool football player that I just photographed or something like that, like I'll do an ad with his pictures. So, uh, because parent, mom and dad, so I got mom with the smiles. I got dad with the sports. Okay. So, so I will actually target just the male clients like in the age group on Facebook with the sports stuff, you know, and then I will go on Instagram and that'll be my really fashion trendy images. So 
Um, and, but I mix it up a little bit on Instagram because the girls like to see some smiley ones occasionally and more nature. So like, it, it's definitely strategic. Like every post I have, like if I feel like I've been posting a lot of sports images, then I mix it up and I'll post some really smiley, like bright natural light images for a couple posts. And then I'll post some studio images. And then, so, you know, you want to show them that, listen, I can photograph this all. Like I can make everybody happy. So I can make dad happy with the sports. I can make mom happy with the smiley pretty images. I can make the senior happy with the super trendy ones. And then the friends are seeing the super trendy ones on Instagram and that's what they want. So it's full circle, so. And it's, I'm so happy that you're breaking it mm -hmm. down for us because yeah. you know, it's true what you say that any photography genre is you're marketing to multiple people. But with yeah. seniors, I can't think of a more like, you know, they're equally important, but yeah. they're so different. Like what yeah. the kids like is not going to be what the parents like and vice versa. Yeah. Like, oh, it is. <laughs> and, but you can use that to sell more images though, too. So um, because if you're making everybody happy during your session, mom's not going to let go of her top 10. Dad's not going to let go of his top 10. Senior's not going to let it go to his top 10. So now you've got three different people and they have to get all those images. So um, they won't, neither one, none of them will let them go. So yeah. So if you're, as long as you're catering, you need to cater a little bit to everybody. So you need, that's why I'm saying during, while I'm shooting, I'm using a light. I'm not using a light. I'm using reflectors, not using reflectors. I'm using different lenses. I'm using, you know, we're using totally changing up the locations, you know, while we're shooting, because that's giving a, my senior tons of variety. So if and if I make a mistake, then and I pick maybe, maybe I say, pick the wrong lighting, like maybe I went too edgy for an outfit. Okay. We're gonna have two totally different other scenarios that most likely I've nailed it at least one. So, um, so, you know, make sure it kind of covers my, my butt a little bit there too. So because it happens. Sometimes I think I'm I'm nailing this kid's personality and I'm loving these images and it turn, and they come to view and they're like, yeah, I don't like any of those ones. And I'm like, those are my favorites, you know? So, uh, yeah, so. Okay. Nikki, can I, can I ask you just like a typical like interview question? It just came to my mind, yeah. but I, I kind of want to ask you just a really typical interview question. And that is like, when, is, can you remember a moment when uh, something just kind of went wrong or you made a mistake or something? Oh like, yeah. How did that um, like transpire? And what did you do to kind of trying get to think of a good it, one? To turn it um, into, into a positive. Uh <laughs> sorry, it just came to me. No, yeah, no. Job me, um, your question. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of our viewers would like to know. Uh yeah. You know, like, so I mean everybody happened. makes this like everybody makes mistakes for sure. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, my husband covers like he just walked in, so I'm not just saying this because he walked in and and he's looking at me. But he covers my butt so much when I make mistakes. Like I'll send him a quick text and be like, "Hey, you got to go home and grab this stuff because I totally forgot." Um, so um, one time I, and this is I'm gonna go back to wedding client because this okay. was a this is a big one, and this was it was probably six years ago, but it was still a one that I will never ever ever forget. Um, so I drove all the way to Pittsburgh, which is about an hour and a half for us to mm. shoot an engagement session. Um, I had never met the bride and groom since we lived an hour and a half away. They booked me all online. Um, and this was before Zoom calls were such a big deal or anything. So we didn't even like Zoom chat or anything. Um, got all the way there. Uh, and this was like a really big wedding client, really, really big. Um, so really big house, you know, like expensive cars, everything like that. I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a great wedding. No memory cards, none. Yeah. So I got everything out and I'm like starting to shoot and I'm looking and I'm like, uh, I don't have a memory card in my, and I don't have it in my bag. I've got nothing. So the groom went in and pulled three uh, cameras out of the house. It was like, do any of these cards work? And I was like, oh my God, yeah, this one works. So we quickly made sure I could format it. I helped him put them on his computer, saved them, backed them up for him, and then uh, put it in my camera reformatted it and shot on their card that day um so because it was a it was like a really snowy day too and best buy was super far so it, was, it, it worked out the best bet so um yeah so that was definitely a learning experience so what i did because i felt like a complete jerk and i'm like these people are going to cancel this wedding on me i'm like i look so unprepared so i sent back the card i obviously i formatted it so they didn't have the raw files on it but um i formatted it and i put all their edits on it okay mm -hmm. from their engagement session even though i was delivering them digitally i put them in on the sd card the final edits 
And then I sent them a hundred dollar gift card for their, the restaurant that they had talked about that they loved. And I was like, I'm so sorry for making this mistake. I swear this is not normal. Like I wouldn't make it up to you. So here's a gift card. And they like, they told more people about the gift card than they did about their pictures. So it just became like a funny story. And like, it wasn't like a big deal anymore. Cause I was like, I kind of, I think I made it up for him. So I, I guess taking care of your client, like if you make a mistake, take care of them, take care of them. And, um, you know, always give them a little extra or something like, um, and, cause I, I think everybody will understand a mistake, especially one like that. Um, yeah. it's just how you deal with it and how you own up to it at the end. So clients read through bullshit. So they do, <laughs> so they can read right through it. So Absolutely. Thank you for answering that question. And yeah. that was a great example of the yeah. way that you saved it and you turned it into a good moment to kind of cover it all. And, and thank you for that, Nikki. Uh, I'm going to come back to um, senior photography and things like this. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I've kind of uh, finished with social media. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, yeah. any of you. Um, but I wanted to say, to ask you, uh, what can photographers do, like senior photographers, to kind of better their business uh, when maybe clients aren't coming in or to be appropriate to the times when they're not allowed to maybe go out and shoot person to person so much. What are some things that photographers can still do, senior photographers, to mm -hmm. improve their business? So like off season kind of? Yeah. Or if we yeah. find ourselves in another kind yeah, of. Yeah. Or another. Yeah. Or so, like this. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I used my off season to really fine tune my marketing for this year. Um, I. You know, I really touched base with a lot of clients during that time. Uh, I I would go back through my, um, you know, clients that I knew who had kids coming up for the next year, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I would say, hey, like, you know, I know you have a senior graduating next year, so why don't we get you on the list? So what I did this this year, at least, was I created a priority, priority booking list. So because um, I really didn't know how this year was going to go. So my thought originally was I'm going to have to take about 50% less clients because I was thinking um, if they if I if they limit contact and do contract tracing and stuff I, and I can shoot only one a week all season, you know what I mean? Like that was like the worst case scenario. So I did a 2021 senior priority booking list and I put it out there. They weren't allowed to pick their dates or anything. They just paid their booking fee and it guaranteed them a spot on my calendar. Um, I sold that out within three weeks. So I stopped taking any additional bookings then because I really didn't know what was gonna go on. So I didn't open up my calendar again until um, after I allowed those kids to pick their date. And then I opened my calendar back up when I when I started to see, okay, I think we're gonna open up full on, it's gonna be okay. So, so yeah, the priority booking list really, really worked well. Um, I'm considering doing it again this year just because of how well it booked. And, and it's really hard for those kids. They want to make sure they have a spot on your calendar, but they don't want to pick out a date like six months in advance, you know? So um, so I'm thinking about doing that again in like January and just doing a priority booking list again and, and saying they don't really have to pick their date until May. So, yeah. yeah. That's, a really, that's a really good idea. Like I heard mm -hmm. that urgency, kind of that tactic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I love marketing. I'm a marketer, but sometimes I don't like it because the way you have to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> but the urgency yeah. and using that tactic, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. is effective. But it, it really is. is effective. Yeah. And I, and I think, honestly, when I said, listen, I might not be able to shoot a full summer, like it got people moving, you know, like I was being honest with them. We had no idea what was going to happen. So, yeah. Um, you know, and those seniors still booked their sessions whenever they wanted it. And I let them book first and it worked yeah. out really, really well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to do something similar again and not even just so much for the urgency of it. It, it, it was almost it, my clients love the fact that they were not locking in a date, but locking in a spot with me. You know what I mean? So um, they knew once like May hit, they could pick whatever date they wanted. They would have first dibs still, you know, and everything. And. Um, so there wasn't going to be like a mad rush for dates or anything like that, but they mm -hmm. also didn't have, they were able to see what their schedule was going to be like this summer a little bit more because mm -hmm. how many times, you know, I, I'm typically booked out about six months in advance. So mm -hmm. it's really hard sometimes to know what you're doing six months from now. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was nice for me. I was able to get a little bit more of my summer schedule set before I opened up my calendar. And I think it was really great for my clients too. So. Absolutely. You know, and, and I'm just kind of quickly running through my head. Like most of mm -hmm. these 
higher, you know, when you when you go flying, for example. Yeah. That's one of the major perks if you're like a club yeah. member that you get prior you get to choose yeah. where you want to sit, you get to do it Absolutely. first, you have dibs, like this idea of priority, mm -hmm. having first shots and also somewhat of a sense of urgency and yeah. sense now is your time to do it, or you're gonna yep. have to be stuck with everybody else. It's super effective. It kind of goes back to what you say about uh how you write everything down too for your pricing list and everything. So just get it yep. out there because we all have yep. that voice in our head like oh you know and i'll do it you know later but when you yeah. put it out there like now is the time yeah and well i think collecting i think collecting emails helps with that kind of thing too um i do a ton of email collecting through my website so like right now i have like a um a, like essentially a newsletter set up just for the class of 2022 seniors so um if you go through my instagram links you'll be able you'll see class of 2022 model team info and so I, I have probably have three or 400 kids emails already logged into that. So when I open up my calendar for next year, I can meet direct market right to those kids that have been giving me their emails. And, and so they're going to get first dibs at anything because they've signed up for it. So um, email marketing is huge too. Like I feel like email marketing is the old paper mail marketing. So um, it's a great way to kind of still stay in contact with your clientele and, you know, there's something to be said about having 5,000 plus people's emails, you know, um, right. you, that you can at any point in time, just e drop one email to all of them and mm. be done, you know, and you've done your marketing. So, right. um, I, I see, um, a question. Maybe, yeah. yeah. If, um, well, Nikki, if you don't, if yeah. you don't mind for a yeah. second, if you know where we're getting to your question, yeah, okay. I just kind of wanted, I wanted to tie a bow onto this topic. Okay. You're, you're talking about, you you're talking about, I'm like, Okay, so. <laughs> you're talking about you're sending out yeah. emails to your yeah. clients which you mean yeah. then are like kids like 18 17 yeah years. kids and parents yeah so yes. i have different ones so yeah i have different ones for like different age groups so um mm -hmm. the way i use um photo biz for my um mm -hmm. website and all the their email marketing is right in in there as well so mm -hmm. i can create different forms that have people fill out and it kind of puts them into little subcategories so mm -hmm. at any point in time i could come in there and just send an email to just the kids or just the parents or so or i could send them to both so um you know whoever they're sign signing up under you know i have one that comes from instagram and that's all kids you know and then i know that that's the kids emails you know and then or most likely you know and then i have one from facebook and i know that's probably more the parents and so the same way i was doing those facebook ads and stuff and targeting different people i'm just doing the exact same thing with my newsletter so i'm trying to categorize make sure they're in categories so that way i know who to send what to so okay sorry nadine but i brought this back yeah. up because i want to just really emphasize because yeah. you're you right how important and how useful and valuable email is i think that's a perfect yeah. comparison that you say that it's like nowadays uh yeah traditional mail and yeah. though just to, to reinforce that even again even with senior clients like 18 17 it's mm -hmm. not dead because sometimes people no. might go far and i'm not speaking mm -hmm. to anybody in the audience specifically but researching the topic even from just the general business marketing yeah. perspective as you know as, as i do for mm -hmm. our company there's a lot of people out there who think oh email it's, it's past you just got to go directly to people on facebook or something no like no it's still extremely valuable yeah. again with 17 and 18 year old kids yeah uh, all superior they, everybody has an email everybody has an email so and that's the best way to direct market straight to them and know they've seen it so yeah. Um, and it's cheaper. So I'm paying less per email going out than I am per click on Facebook. So, um, so you know, and those are people that have expressed interest in my business. They've mm -hmm. come to me and put their name on that list. So mm -hmm. I, it's it's people, it's people that I can stay in contact with every single year, year mm -hmm. on year out, and they are the ones that express interest in me, not the other way around. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So even if you, for those listening, even if you're doing some advertisements on Facebook, try mm -hmm. do what you can do to try and get mm -hmm. people's emails, have them sign up for something somehow and get the email. I actually started off my mailing list by doing a Facebook ad for it. Sign up and the Facebook ad was just sign up for my mailing list. So mm -hmm. for to, to hear the first, I think the first one I ever did was before I opened up the dates for the next calendar year for my seniors, mm -hmm. I had them sign up for a newsletter. And so my newsletter heard that the dates went out first, essentially, is what okay. I told them. So, and you know, and so just use that, you can kind of 
it's a full circle. You know, you have to kind of use a little bit of everything. So in order to, um, and it takes a little bit of planning. And and I will say my social media advertising is a lot better during the off season than it is like right. Like if you go to my Instagram right now, I haven't posted in almost two weeks. I'm, it's just it's busy. So, um, but it, I'm not really looking to get new clients right now. Anyways, I'm booked out all through my whole season. So I'm focusing on the people that paid for me right now. Um, you know, so my social media is a little slower. My ads are still going and stuff. But um, you know, I. I'm, I'm getting 10 plus inquiries a day and I don't have any space for the kids. So I don't really want like a ton of marketing. Why waste m marketing dollars right now? So, so um, now I'll hit it again really hard in like December, January, when things slow down again, I'll really be like on it daily. And, you know, cause that's when I'm booking my year for next year. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're an athlete, Nikki, so you know, in season, you focus on the season. It's yeah. an off yep. season when you focus yeah. on next year. <laughs> yeah. You, you uh, start your training for next year, you know, exactly. that's when you take part your swing. And yeah, so exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah, and so right now is um, probably in the next month, um, next year's model team info will go out. So I'll mm -hmm. just start like teasing it out there a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, I'm also... I do a lot of volume sports photography as well. So mm -hmm. this is kind of, um, I actually took this whole week off because I have to prepare all my model team stuff for next year. And I have to prepare all of my um, volume sports business for next year. So this is that week for me to kind of tie all that stuff together and get it ready to go. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to start teasing it out there and, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, making sure the volume sides booked up fully then, and then, and then the model team stuff, I always book that before my regular seniors. So um, so those are my next two. They're kind of my off-season businesses, I call them. So, um, so that's that's what I'm getting ready this week, actually. So, Okay. Thank you, Nadine, so much for yeah. being so patient. Uh, the question from Nadine is, how many sessions do you typically do a week? I will shoot myself. Um, three is my happy point. So I like to shoot Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, October, which is fall season for me, I will shoot five a week. So I will shoot Monday through Friday. So all my ordering meetings then go into the evenings. So it's a lot more hours during the evenings, but um, I could probably triple that and still book out full <laughs> during October. So, um, but I have found that, um, you know, my happy point seems to be a session in the morning and then, you know, ordering in the evening for, for whatever senior. So um and just try to bust out as many as i possibly can and i also tell my clients during um i also tell my clients during the busy season that um you know i, I we shoot all october and we edit all november <laughs> so um they you know i'm really honest with them i'm like listen we're, we're we've got three more weeks of good weather i'm like i'm shooting every single day i'm like then i'm gonna sit down and edit so and they're as long but that expectation is there from the beginning and they know it and nobody ever fights me over it. They're totally cool with it. So um, how, many, how do you keep up with all that? <laughs> um, a big team around me, honestly. So yeah, so I um, I will send out my editing. Um, so when I get super, super busy and I can't keep up, um, I have no problem. I have an editor that I will use. Um, I have uh, a really good email uh, marketing in place. So from the time somebody books me, through and they pay me for their session all the way to when they show up at my door. I don't have to talk to them. I have so much information being auto emailed out to them through my system that you know it's just they 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 get everything they need. They don't have a bunch of questions for me. Um, so I'm not doing a lot of of that anymore. Um, I'm also um, I'm also have a, uh, my husband works with the business, so he does all the setup and tear downs of sets and things like that for me. But when I walk in, I, I'm just ready to shoot. And then, um, you know, I have um, another photographer as well that she does a lot of the little basics. She'll, she calls and, you know, gets all that stuff ready for me too. So it's a team. It's not just me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and the editor. Yeah, so um, for me, the biggest thing, the thing that takes me the longest um, time is skin. So the rest of it's super, super easy. Um, so I just have my editor do skin and then I do the rest. So it still stays really consistent with my style. Um, it seems to work great for me. Um, and then um, 
and I only really use it when I get swamped. So I, I know I can send off a session and just have the skin done. Um, um, yeah, but outsource, man, like you got to outsource. So don't be afraid. It's the same way if I was super busy, I'd have you guys design my album. So, um, you know, sometimes you got to spend a little to make a little bit more and you got to find that, you know, fine, fine line of how much can you actually handle. Um, I, for me, I'm a workaholic. I love to work. So I have no problem, uh, you know, crushing myself a little bit a couple times a year to, to, you know, pay for, pay for all those fun trips and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we uh, just recently announced a partnership with PickTime, so a way that you can help to automate your designing uh, if you're somebody like Nikki and just does not have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. you can, uh, yep. Use that service if you already do or join up with it and find our products in there and they can help to have you design your albums very quickly, automatically, whole nine. You can check that out on our website as well. We just put news up about that a few days ago. Uh, so, wow, yeah, you are just always, always, always busy, Nikki. But like yep. you said, we we'll love it team efforts mm -hmm. yep so once again photographers don't don't hesitate to reach out and ask for help or look for help mm -hmm. uh now the editor the um the editor uh amanda brought up the editor is there any like was there any secret behind that or are you just really kind of went to try to find an editor or was it something you yeah knew? so i did it during my off season so like it's not if you are looking for an editor right now and you are in, already knee deep in your editing season you're going to waste more time trying to find that perfect fit then, and you'll just wait, you'll waste time. So I recommend doing it during your off season, sending out files, sending the same file out to multiple people helps. So, and then whoever did it closest to what you want, that's who you go with. So, um, and then you just build it into your pricing. So, um, you know, it, so it, it, and it, outsourcing doesn't have to be expensive as long as you build it in. So, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's an important point to make too. Build it into your pricing, mm -hmm. so essentially you're not paying for yep. it. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Well, it's the same way you do with your products. You know, you're you're pricing your product to make profit on it, so mm -hmm. price your files the same way. So. And I think you know it can't be overstated how nice it is to like save time or relieve some stress mm -hmm. from outsourcing something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's, nobody's it's, a superhero. Nobody can do everything on their own. Exactly. Why would you why would you yeah. want to try so, and, and these people like i can edit skin amazing okay mm -hmm. but these people that's all they do so why mm -hmm. not give it to a pro so and i can come in and finish toning the image real quick and stuff like that that takes seconds skin, let's mm -hmm. be honest every photographer knows skin is the hardest thing so for me that was my way to give up a little bit of control but still retain control is mm -hmm. i you know i i come in and i do a, a kind of a color correction send it off for the skin and be edited, and then I do my final edit. So I spend maybe, you know, 20, 30 minutes a session editing. So um, not bad at all. No. Amanda has come to us with a few more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. When you do the folios, those, those images sorry, are fully edited, right? Yes. Yeah. So I nothing goes out of my door without a full edit. Um, I don't do any online galleries where they see images before the, a full edit, anything. So if if it's out there it's a full edit so yeah okay how, how much time does it take you to get it from you know coming home from the shoot to being able to publish with a full edit yeah um if i'm doing skin and everything maybe maybe five minutes so i i really honestly don't so i feel like um i know that my work has a look to it and i think a lot of people think it's heavily edited but i think Honestly, if you look at my raw files, they're really close. Okay. So um, I'm using a lot of lighting and I'm using a lot of, so like if, if I want really dark contours, I'm gonna shoot my lighting for that too. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that saves so much time in your editing if you're mm -hmm. shooting in camera for what you want the final result to be, so. Okay, and the other question from Amanda, do you have a specific amount of photos you reveal to the clients? Yeah. Um, I probably overwhelm mine, but it's okay. Um, I do not edit prior to them seeing their images. They see non-edited images at their ordering meeting. So a slight color correct and that's it. Um, so the reason being is why would I spend hours and hours of work and pay for an editor to do all the skin work and then they only order three eight by tens. So I, I do not have a minimum order. Um, a client can come to me and literally buy three eight by tens and that's fine. Because guess what? I'm going to edit three files and send off the eight by tens and I'm done. 
Okay. And my, and I'm priced accordingly that if that's all they want, you know, I'm fine. So, um, so I think that's a big thing. I think a lot of people get stuck on minimums. Whereas if you put the work in after they order, then it really doesn't matter what they order. So you're happy regardless. So um, I will typically show my clients anywhere from about 50 to 100 images. Um, most of my clients order between 30 and 50 images total. Um, so I mean, I'll, and the 50 is like the high end, they spend a lot of money, you know, and then um, the 30 and I do have a 15 image package too. So but I, I would say most of them end up about 30 images. So and 30 images are nothing. I mean, that, that takes that does not take that much time. So Okay. Yep. Nikki, we got to get you back on for another live. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much more I want to talk about, but I just like to talk. Uh, oh my absolutely. God. Um, I got to ask you, though, at least one more question so yeah. my bodies don't kill me. <laughs> That's in regard to print products. We were talking a lot about print products. I know you yeah. love them. You use them all the time. Uh, for the sake of time, let me go right to this one. Uh, what are some print products that you find to be very popular for your senior photography clients and their parents and their families? Yeah, so um, I am slowly switching basically everything over to you guys. Um, and um except for my canvases because we have a canvas company 30 minutes from my house so i have to kind of stay loyal to them but um but yeah but everything else i even my prints or everything has started to come through you guys now um so i have found um uh, the mounted prints i found those when um i started doing your folio boxes and my clients picked those up and they like they're just wowed by them they're like, these are so nice. And so I'd always had mounted on a thinner mount before. And those thick mounts that come with the folio boxes, they're like, they love them. So I've started doing all of my prints through you guys too with that same mounting. And they're they're huge. So, um, but I don't sell a ton, a ton of prints. Um, I definitely okay. sell mostly the folio boxes and the albums. Um, and I sell a ton and I've started, um, I just ordered some samples of the metals. And I've been starting to sell a ton of metals. So the metals look killer with the sports images. So I've been pushing metals for those. Um, and those have been selling really, really well this year. Um, and I'm also, so I'm still, I'm only about a year with you guys, but I mean, it's just, it's been night and day. Like the, like people used to pick up my albums and they'd be like, oh, these are nice. And now they pick them up. They're like, holy mole, like, holy crap. You know, it's like, they, they make such an impression on people. So, um, so, you know, I'm slowly, trying new products and stuff but um yeah definitely try the metals when i got to sample the metal i was super happy with it it looked really really good um and then so yeah i'm just i'm i'm trying like like i said i'm like uh i i, I used a lab for 13 years and now we're now you're doing all my prints too so we're happy, yep. to, hear that. We're happy to have you yep. Nikki. and how did you how did you find us like how did you come across uh, my a good friend of mine uh tara rudy She's another senior photographer, um, and we we know each other from um, going to push conferences and from Senior Style Guide. I'm sure anybody in the senior world knows Senior Style Guide. So, um, but yeah, so Tara posted one on her Instagram, and I and I literally messaged her, and I was like, "Where in the world did you find these?" Um, and I ordered a sample, and I ditched everything else like immediately. I was like, "I've got to!" I'm like, "This is my album line." I, I it was mid senior season. I didn't care. So I ordered another sample in a size larger and I was like, this is it. I'm switching mid season. I actually lost a little bit that money on my albums um, because they were a little bit price difference, but I didn't even care the quality. I mean, I was just, they were just selling like hotcakes. So, um, and everybody, like I even had seniors coming back to me and asking if they could replace their album. They just purchased with that. So, and so I was like basically giving to, I was like, yeah, like give me your old one. I'll use it as a sample for like just pictures, you know what I mean? And then, and I yeah. just gave it to him basically at cost because I was like, yeah, I'm like, they, but yeah, that was for me, that was the selling point. Like that was like the moment where I was like, okay, this, this was the right decision to make. So yeah, mm -hmm. they've been selling really, really well. That's great to hear. Yeah. We're so happy to have you here, Nikki. We really are. And yes, keep going with those medals. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. and uh, for all of you listening in the audience, I've conveniently reposted the link to the promotion we're having going on, these folio boxes that you heard 
uh, Nikki rave about are included in this promotion. Now through this promotion, they're for client orders. Uh, so if you would like to get a sample first, you'd have to reach out to us and ask us about sample offers. But if you already know your clients will like them, go through that link and get 45% off client orders for folio boxes, as well as wall decor, check in with us, uh, email one of our sales reps, and they will tell you how to go about getting the best wall decor for your studio at a good price. Um, so thank you so much for that, Nikki. As I said, we just got to get you back on another live. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All night, and I know that you are very busy and myself as well and our audience. So thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your day to sit here yeah, no problem. with us. And again, we are just so fortunate to have you working with us at, at MPhoto. And if you ever have any other questions or anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Be sure to keep checking back our Enphoto Lab page as we will have plenty more content coming your way. Again, do check out the blog at Enphoto.com to find out more information about our current uh, mini sessions, promo, as well as information about our products and how they can best serve you and your business. Um, that's going to do it for tonight. My name is Eugene Negovieski with Enphoto along with Nikki Hufford. Thank you so much for joining us, Nikki. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye.